Hello, welcome back to Blue Harvest Vintage Toys. Unfortunately, today's video is going to be about the biggest scandal to hit UK collecting Toy Tony. In recent years, vintage toys based on characters in the hugely successful Star Wars films have become highly collectible. These boxed figures now often sell for hundreds of pounds, and the very rare ones sell for thousands. But there's a disturbance in the world of Star Wars collectibles. This figure, and thousands like it, are not what they appear to be. Dark forces have been at work. Is Darth Vader my father? George Lucas's iconic Star Wars trilogy spawned a very lucrative line in merchandise. The year is 1978, and Palatoy bring you Star Wars. Back in the late 70s, these figures, manufactured and marketed by Palatoy, were the best-selling toy in the world. The action figures fired the imagination of many a wannabe Jedi, but these days they've become a much sought-after collectible with a great deal of that demand coming from the generation that grew up with the films. Jason Smith is one of these collectors. Ten years ago, he came across his boyhood collection of Star Wars figures again, and a missing part re-sparked his passion for them. It was about ten years ago. I got my original figures from when I was visiting my mum and dad and noticed that I'd lost the blaster on the Princess Leia, and thought, oh, it'd be really nice if I just have an original blaster. So I went on eBay, bought one figure to get this blaster, and then thought, oh, the next eight figures that I never got as a kid. Went, Wouldn't it be nice just to have those? So I then went and bid on those and got those eight figures, and that just opened the floodgates. Jason started by collecting the card backs, but soon moved on to the boxed figures. In time, he amassed one of the largest collections in the galaxy. Figures in this condition will fetch a stack of galactic credits. Prices start at around £200, but can go as high as £8,000 for the rarest items. But over the last few years, Jason and other collectors noticed increasing numbers of high-quality boxed figures coming onto the market. Gradually, they became suspicious of one prominent seller. He had a seemingly endless supply of nice German and Palatoy figures to sell and has been selling these for 20 years. Through a chance conversation, the small band of collectors discovered this document, a sales list. Their source was a toy dealer who revealed that in 1984, just as the Palatoy factory in Colville was being closed down, he'd been discreetly offered the contents of the list, a job lot of thousands of card backs and bubbles. The dealer told the collectors he decided not to buy the cards, but fake Britain has seen evidence that another individual did purchase the list. Now, what if original card backs and bubbles had been paired with second-hand repainted figures and then sold as boxed mint figures? This would explain the mysterious collector's seemingly inexhaustible supply of mint condition figures. Soon, news came confirming their worst fears. He was selling on eBay through uh, one account, um, large amounts of particular figures, and then on a secret eBay account, he kept buying up loose figures for the exact figures that he was short based on what was in the list. At that point, it, it looks like a production line. You know, they come in one eBay account and they go out the other one, you know, all, all assembled. The fakery has cost Jason a substantial sum. I had a run of 16 of these Palatoy Afa 90 Return of the Jedi cards. As it turns out, every single one of them was made by the faker in question. I sold them all at that point, got about half my money back. I mean, overall, on, on those cards, I'm probably down about £2,000. When selling these card backs, Jason had clearly stated that the cards he was selling were not true originals. As a result, he only got half the price. But not every seller is aware they're flogging a fake. You know, if you look on eBay any day of the week, you'll see a dozen, dozen of these things on there, and maybe half of them have been declared half of them haven't. What isn't in doubt is that the faker has made a lot of money. If you make a conservative estimate and say he sold each figure for maybe a hundred pounds and he sold, say he sold a hundred a year and he's done it for 20 years, that's 200,000 pounds right there. 
Jason and a small group of collectors set about identifying the signs of fakery. This archive footage from the Palatoy factory provided the collectors with a vital clue. The bubbles were pressed to the individual boxes by a machine. The faker wouldn't have had access to this kind of industrial machinery, so the small band of collectors started examining the seal on some of the boxed figures in their possession. They discovered crude attempts to seal the bubble onto the card back. The most common thing with all the cards that he produced is the fact that they are absolutely case fresh. The one on the left is a genuine mint on card and the one on the right is uh, from the faker and you can see on the back of the card that the, the genuine one which was pressed in the factory has a bigger indent around uh, the back of the bubble on the back of the card than the faker's card which is uh, flat. And some examples within Jason's collection reveal evidence of the faker's attempt to seal the bubble to the card. So essentially we've got here a faker card that's been opened and uh, an actual so shop sold card which has been opened. With the real card you can see that there's the remnants of a shop sticker and you can see there's a lot more card being taken off when the bubble was removed because it was obviously a lot more firmly attached whereas card on the left from the faker has left very little impression when the, the bubble was taken off. And if you look closely there's a clue that this card was sealed with something other than an industrial machine. And you can actually see, if you hold it in the light, you can see an iron mark going all the way across the card, where the iron was applied. We'll start on the uh, Star Wars first then, lot number one. Chris Aston is an auctioneer specialising in modern toys and Star Wars is his top seller. £120, the bid's there, 130 With potentially six or 7,000 faked figures out there, hundreds of collectors could be affected by the suspected fakery. 220 now, looking for 240 Bid's here at £220. <coughs> Sold. We asked Chris to take a look at the collection of one buyer who'd recently been purchasing large numbers online. Company director John Webb has only been collecting Star Wars figures for a short while, but he's amassed quite a collection. Through here? Wow, fantastic. Yeah, there you go. I take it you're aiming for pretty uh, high quality in terms of condition then, by the looks of it. So we've got an Imperial Stormtrooper. This is bought off eBay. What's the most you've seen one? I've seen some of these go really for 250, 300, yeah, no yeah, problem. So the first thing I'm looking at is the actual seal on the bubble where it's been pressed down. Mm -hmm. We can't really see like a, an imprint from the machine that's pushed it down. My inkling is that this is a fake. Another figure has caught Chris's eye. The imprint just definitely, definitely not the same on these figures. That's like as if someone's just pressed it down hard with their finger. Still definitely worth money. 50%, maybe 60% less than what it would be if it was 100% right. Mm. No, it's just one of those things, isn't it? It looks like there are definitely two fakes in John's collection. Uh, disappointing for him. And interesting to see them as part of a big collection where the vast majority of it is genuine. Um, and it just shows how somebody can easily be uh, duped. It was really useful having Chris to come along. Clearly, he knows his stuff. He knows a lot about the subject. And he was able to give me some pointers. He's verified that most of the stuff is genuine. It's very disappointing that these two particular items may be uh, fakes. Dozens of collectors have had to come to terms with sizeable losses as a result of the fakery. Well, it was the biggest uh, scandal in vintage Star Wars collecting that there's ever been and lots of people were, were furious about it. I kind of came to realise that I'd lost you know, thousands of pounds on it. I was suitably upset about that. It kind of tainted the whole collecting kind of hobby for me for a bit um, but then you know I came to terms with it I came up with a plan of action and moved on so that was a TV program a uh, little bit of background on Toy Tony but what actually is a Toy Tony mock it is a home sealed mock using original card back and bubble Toy Tony will purchase figures and seal them using a mock he always used vintage figures accessories bubbles and card backs so everything about the item is vintage except for the fact that it was never sealed in the factory in later years he began using some of reproduction bubbles 
And it appears that initially Titan used an iron to seal the bubbles onto the cards. And some of the first examples were very messy. Over time, he refined his techniques and at some point it is believed he managed to perfect a way of pr to pressure seal the bubbles to the cards at home. So how long had it been going on and how was this scandal uncovered? In December 2013, a discussion on the Star Wars Forum UK led to the revelation that Toy Tony purchased thousands of unused bubbles and card backs after the Palatoy factory closed. Luckily, a document came to light that listed the card backs which were sold to him. This list was used to create the reference guide that you can see on the Palatoy Matrix website that Jason Smith from the TV programme has created. And I will be running through them at the end of this video. Once the investigation started, it was found that Toy Tony's eBay buying activity largely matched his selling activity. He would purchase a loose figure, and after a few days later, he would sell the same figure in a smart new packaging. It's actually assumed that he's been assembling mocks for 20 years. So how many Toy Tonys are there? The reference guide shows 55 separate cards which were offered and assumed purchased by Toy Tony after the close of the factory. In total, there are 11,534 cards that is assumed he acquired. There were largely a 50-50 split between Palatoy and General Mills cards, although there are also 277 Clipper cards. He had these for over 20 years, so the actual number of examples in circulation is unknown. It is estimated to be at least 7,000. My figure is graded, so it's safe, right? Unfortunately, companies such as AFA and UKG have been grading for many years, and they were fooled too. Just like everyone else, many Toy Tony mocks have been graded over the years, and a majority of which received grades of at least 85 and often 90. This is because they were never in a retail environment and literally in perfect condition. Population reports show that AFA graded over 1,000 Toy Tony mocks, and it's estimated that UKG have graded around 500. So how can I spot a Toy Tony mock? Number one, check the affected card backs from the list I will give at the end of this video. Number two, check that it's a known card back, bubble or CEO or combo. These can be checked easily on many websites. Number three, check if it has any signs of proper retail exposure, such as price tags. I do prefer card backs with a price tag on them. It gives you a bit that bit of history. Number four, check the signs of play weight on the figure. Now, if the figure looks like it's been used, if there's any paint rub at all off the figure, then you know it's been recarded. The only other time you really see a bit of paint wear is it's like a bit of nose rub on the Imperial Dignitary or the Luke Jedi. Number five, check for a V-shaped iron marks on the seal. This is on early items, so it's not on them all. Number six, check for light scratches or iron marks across the front of the card. Or if it's a bit shiny, the card's a bit shiny. Number seven, check for a lack of pressure seal imprint on the back of the card. Now, the uh, machines in the Palatoy factory press down that bubble onto the card. So you get uh, like an imprint of the, of the bubble on the back of the card. So check that. Number eight is compare bubble placements. A Titone is usually dead center over the colored area and the machines in the Palatoy factory were never that accurate. Number nine is sometimes the figure can be too large for the bubble. And number ten, extremely mint bubbles and cards are often a sign that it's never been in a retail environment. So here we are with the Titone card back reference guide. And the numbers shown in brackets estimate how many card backs Toy Tony is believed to have required. We'll start with the Empire Strikes Back, Clipper 45 back. Bespin Guard White 69. Dengar 11. Hammerhead 69. Rebel Commander 72. And Walrus Man 56. On the Empire Strikes Back, General Mills 45 back. Without English text. We've got a Ben Kenobi 138. Bespin Guard White 69. Bosk 500, C3PO with removable limbs 357, Han Solo 194, Han Solo Bespin 162, Han Solo Hoth 563, IG 88 276, Princess Leia 25, Atto D2 Sensor Scope 171, Stormtrooper 526, 
and Yoda 85. On the Empire Strikes Back General Mills 45 back with English text. We have a 2 and B, 268. Attack Driver, 320. Attack Commander, 70. Bespin Guard Black, 318. Chewbacca, 66. Cloud Car Pilot, 90. FX7, 26. Leia Bespin, 166. Leia Hoff, 50. Power Droid, 118. R5D4, 11. Rebel Commander, 73. And Rebel Soldier, 36. On the Empire Strikes Back, Palatoy, 45 B card. Bosk, 500. Chewbacca, 66. And the TIE Fighter Pilot, 264. On to the Return of the Jedi General Mills, 45 C back. Clock Car Pilot, 30. And the TIE Fighter Pilot, 6. Return of the Jedi Palatoy, 45 C back. Is 2-1-B, 301. Attack Commander, 27. Boba Fett, 482. Cloud Car Pilot, 8. Death Star Droid, 417. Han Solo, 47. Lobot, 467. Luke Skywalker, 885. Luke Skywalker, Best Spin, 132. And Yoda, 12. On to Return of the Jedi Palatoy, 65 Seabacks. We have the Gamorrean Guard, 31. Lando Skiff Guards, 86. Logre, 81. Princess Leia Bush, 30. Squidhead, 60. And finally, onto the Return of the Jedi Palatoy 65D back. We have Attack Driver, 39. C3PO Removable Limbs, 1,234. Chewbacca, 143. Imperial Hoth Stormtrooper, 1,126. And Luke Skywalker Hoth, 105. I don't know about you, but it really begs belief why he actually did this. I don't know how much he paid for all those cards, but it won't be as much as what he could get on those cards now. He does have a currently running eBay page, and you never see any of the cards on there, which is quite surprising. I think there is a couple of Toy Tonys, but I don't really want to go into that. He's one seller I do avoid. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it's been educational for you, and it can probably be used as a reference guide. But massive thanks go out to Jason Joyner for uncovering the scam in the first place and to Jason Smith for committing so much time researching in order to better educate the community and to Echo Base for producing the guide which I used for this video. If you're a collector, you need to be on Echo Base on Facebook and get one of these guides, they're only £8. Also, thanks to BBC and Fake Britain for the programme talking about the scam. And for Blacked Out Ewoks for his uh, videos on all his Toy Tonys. Again, thank you for watching. And please subscribe if you like videos like this about history of toys, how to collect. I do try to get one up at least once a week with uh, my other videos of unboxings and reviews and all toy related shenanigans. So please subscribe and hit that bell so you get notifications every time I upload a video. And every time we go live. So until next video, may the toys be with you.